So it's a pleasure and an honor to be with uh, the commander of Artemis II, uh, Commander Reed Wiseman. Thank you very much for being with us in W Radio. You bet. It's great to be here with you. Commander, uh, what does it mean for you to be the commander that is uh, bringing back humanity to orbit the moon, including the first woman and uh, the first uh, African-American? Uh, for me, it's an honor. You, you made me a little nervous with that lead in, actually. Uh, when we look at it, uh, I'm flying with Victor Glover, Christina Cook, Jeremy Hansen. These are three of the finest humans I've ever met. They're also three extremely technically competent, extremely experienced people. So when I look at our crew, uh, my hope is I can just set, set, set the tone for the mission and then let them go and achieve greatness because these, these are people that they really need no help. We're going to be an amazing crew. A lot of laughs, uh, but we've got a lot of experience. Commander Wiseman, um, from all the tests that you had had to pass to become the commander of this mission, uh, which one would you say the, was the most challenging and why? Uh, my first space flight, I think leaving the planet for six months, uh, leaving your family behind, that is a formative experience. Uh, there's an immense amount of training uh, to go live and work in low Earth orbit on the International Space Station and actually achieving that mission, coming home. You, you just come home as a seasoned space flyer and you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about how to operate off of the Earth. And I think that probably was the most challenging thing I've done as a professional astronaut. Commander, how do you visualize the future of the moon, um, let's say, in the next five years? Future of the moon in the next five years is going to be, uh, I visualize that magnificent, which is humans are either walking or very close to walking on the moon. We have a gateway that is uh, built by NASA with an, a large international team that is operating in the lunar vicinity. But the thing I also want to highlight is private industry working on the moon and in the sphere of the moon alongside with NASA as we plot our course to Mars. All of that is happening right now. That is not a dream. Industry is, is building spacecraft to go work on the lunar surface in the Artemis program. So this is all becoming a reality. Uh, but would you be, it would be something like divided, uh, like say for example, like for territories, like we see it in Earth, like uh, this part belongs to, I don't know, USA, this part belongs to, I don't know, China or et cetera? Uh, the Artemis Accords are trying to make it so that it is one moon for, for all of us. I don't think there's, there's no way that humans can look at the moon from Earth and think for even one second that we need territorial division on the moon. What we do need is to pre preserve some areas for true scientific research because we need to keep them pristine. But the moon is, is for exploration. We're going to go out there. We're going to learn how to live and work on it. We're going to do it as one civilization for all of humanity. Uh, initially, there may be different countries that are going out there. But there's no way you can look 50 or 100 years in the future and think it won't be one Earth species that is going out in the solar system. Which highlights can you tell us from the new spacesuits um, that you and your crew will be wearing? So for our new spacesuits that we'll be wearing in the Orion spacecraft, they are uh, of the heritage of the shuttle system. However, they're redesigned. We have to have the capability to lose pressuriz pressurization in Orion and survive for about six days, which would be horribly uncomfortable. But these spacesuits are designed to be able to take human waste away, to give us nutrition uh, for about six days in vacuum if we needed them. So they are, you know, you put them on and you instantly feel safe in this tiny spacecraft, which is your spacesuit, because it is very robust, very redundant, and an extremely strong system. The full Artemis missions will take us to Mars at the, at the end. Uh, that, that's the, the goal or the, one of the main goals. Uh, which would you consider is the goal of conquering Mars? Uh, I never like to look at it as conquering Mars. I think what we want to see is, is humans working in the lunar area, working on the moon, heading out to Mars, and then just, I want it to just feel natural. Like you and I can jump in a car, we can go anywhere in Miami, we can go anywhere in Florida, we can take a vacation, uh, we could go, you know, commute for work. Well, that's what it'll feel like when we're working on Mars. Going to the moon will be like, oh, that's a, that's a, a local commute today. You know, I, I think it'll have that feeling when we're actually out there operating and people just see it as normal. Uh, Commander, I understand that you're the father of, of two daughters. Yes. Um, which would be your message to these uh, new generations of, of, well, viewers and listeners that are listening to you right now to, to follow their dreams, to, to try to, to build this future um, as you're doing and, well, your family are doing? Uh, I think it is in our DNA. I, I'm incredibly impressed with the, the students in college right now. What they have at their fingertips 
the, the ease with which they operate in this uh, almost gig economy, they, they invent things quickly, they, they rapidly look at new technologies and embrace them, pull them in. Where are we going with AI? What is going on with our, our cell phones that are in our pocket? And watching these young minds just explore this new territory that we live in, and they're already achieving things that I could never even dream of. Like, I would never even think that's possible. And they just do it in a drop of a hat, create a company, and go. Like, this is a cool generation right now. Commander Reed Whiteman, it was an honor and a pleasure, and thank you very much for being in W Radio. You bet. Thank you. Good to have you.